I'm Dash. And I'm Butter. And this is Pick Out the Jams, a music review show where bands kick out the jams, and we pick out the jams. Yeah, but not with guitars and stuff, like... No, we, we make a list. Yeah, a list. Yeah. List out the jams. List out. Hi, I'm Dash. And I'm Butter. And this is List Out the Jams. Well, we kind of talk about them, too. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. So, I'm Dash. And I'm Butter. And this is Kick, Pick, List, and Talk About the Jams. Today we're talking about Wild Onion, the second episode in David Lynch's smash hit new TV series, Twin Peaks, starring Connor Brodner, Clay Frankel, Jack Dolan, and Katie and James. Dash, what did you think about Wild Onion? So, Wild Onion is Twin Peaks' second album, uh, and I think this album really has its heart on its sleeve. There's a number of songs, almost all the songs really, are about being sort of in your early 20s, maybe a little bit lost, maybe a little bit unhappy. But it's not uh, by any means a really sad, depressing record. And to me, uh, it, it, has, it has two modes. There's a really rock and roll, um, a little bit Ramonesy, a little bit Iggy Pop kind of mode to it. And then the other mode is uh, Dream Poppy. Now the Dream Poppy stuff comes out on, I don't know, maybe four or five of the album's 16 songs. Uh, and most of the time you're in that, you know, really fast, you know, uh, four on the floor, like rock pop mode. Uh, yeah. all, all the songs, except for I think three of them, are less than three minutes long. Yeah. So they're just like boom, boom, boom. And even the after three song. minute ones are not, they're not like epic six, seven minute songs. Yeah. They're, Three and a half, three forty-five, and then that's it. And they they sort of end abruptly as all the rest of the two two and a half minute songs. Yeah, they're still they're all pretty straightforward. There's no there, but at the same time, you can tell that they're really exploring like what they're capable of beyond just like right. a standard rock right. and roll band, like their first album was. Uh, they're kind of venturing out, and it's uh, it's really cool. Actually, I I really dig like where they're going. Um, the, the dreamy stuff is really cool. Uh, lyrically, I think those are my favorite songs, the more dreamy ones, whereas the more rocky ones kind of are a little lacking, yeah. the, a little, the little, rocky Im a little songs immature. In a, multiple songs have lyrics like, oh, my whole life sucks, I just want to, you know, get fucked. And, and uh, where they're taking the sound you know, multi-instrument, multi-instrument uh, setups, and you know this this dream pop sort of creating this uh, this sort of ethereal, dreamy sound. Sometimes it that doesn't really mesh with the with the really simplistic lyrics. And I think uh, I would challenge these guys to to really explore your lyrics like you're exploring the music. You know, there's a lot. There's interesting harpsichord sounds. There's uh, I, I think there's a saxophone. Saxophone. I, there's, there are like some flute. On, yeah, there's a yeah. flute. Um, yeah, I definitely see this as like a transitional album from their first to whatever they do after this. Because uh, this is definitely sort of like an in-between phase kind of thing where the next album will definitely be, you know, maybe there will be a four-minute song on it. Uh, <laughs> so what did you think about the production on this album? Uh, the production, I actually really love the production on this album. I think it's incredible, definitely much better than the last one, which they did themselves. And you could kind of tell that this was like, you know, done by someone, by people who like hadn't really done this before. Because everything's pretty much drenched in reverb, which is like great, because everything sounds better yeah. in reverb, right? Yeah. But, uh, but there, there are other ways to make things sound good. And I think that this sounds much closer to like their sound like when i see them live you know and they're fun and high energy yeah. this sounds way more like what i think they're supposed to sound like on record than you know the reverb soaked first right. album right right uh i i think they don't play too much of the dream pop stuff live the live show tends more heavily towards yeah. the the Iggy Pop kind of sound. Um, 
and and I think the the production is not flawless by any means, but like it's very crisp. The lyrics come through. You can definitely you know hear the bass and in, in, in songs with a driving bass line. Uh, my only complaint is sometimes the cymbals are too heavy, so the so it sounds uh, a little shaky and a little metallic, which uh, I don't I don't always hear when I see them live, but. Um, it's a good mix. It, everything definitely comes through. Yeah. Okay, now's the part of Pick Out the Jams where we... Pick, pick out, out the, the jams. jams! Smash the like it. My, my first pick is going to be track one. I found a new way. Uh, it really, really, more than anything else, evokes that e pop sound. It's, it like, could have been stripped, you know, track seven of Raw Power or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and the lyrics are, like about I found a new way. I found a new way to like explore myself, to learn about the world. Lyrically, that's where it's going. Um, and upon hearing a song, I immediately mean, think of like, it's kind of about drugs, right? It's a druggy, maybe acid trip song, um, but crunchy guitar, like, you know, fast me- rhythm, uh, and, and it's just a great way to, to start an album. Yeah, I actually, I agree with that completely. My next pick, I think, if you're going to walk away from this album with two tracks, um, for me, the fourth track, Sloop JD, uh, is, is another really, really good song. Um, it's the first song on the album that starts to transition into that deer hunter kind of dream pop uh, area. And it's obviously named after Sloop John D., uh, a Beach Boys song, but it doesn't really sound anything like a Beach Boys song. It's not, no part of this album sounds at all like uh, Pet Sounds. Um, but I think their first sort of movement into that dream pop stage, um, it sounds a little bit uh, sort of maybe Donovan y. Ramones? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like Donovan meets the Ramones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's also definitely one of my picks. Uh, might be my favorite track on the whole album. Really solid, really catchy. Um, nice hook. Yeah. Good song. Uh, so my next favorite song would be, I think it's a two-parter, um, Strange World and Stranger World. I'm just going to lump them together because it's they're separated by a couple songs, maybe yeah. one or two. It's kind of like a third of the way into the album, and then yeah. like two thirds of the way into the album. Yeah, um, these two are great. This is where in this in Stranger World is the saxophone, and it's a really nice like interlude to the album. Yeah, really dreamy too. Uh, and Strange World also has that dreamy vibe. Um, yeah, saxophone is like so just <laughs> you can make any kind of dreamy song with a sex. Right, I, yeah. That's it, like, it's yeah. like, but it just, it works, you know? It's like throwing reverb on something. Right. It's just, it's, yeah. gonna, it's gonna work. It doesn't, it's not a jazzy sound, though. No, it's definitely it's, not, yeah. It's not, it's, and the, and the, the saxophone isn't creating a hook, you know, like a cheesy 80s pop song. The saxophone there is there, like, really for texture, and it, yeah, it, it and really fills it out. The saxophone isn't, like, too high. It's just blended just right. It's, like, just at the right place where you can just, kind of zone out for it's like a minute long minute yeah. long song it's just yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and my last pick is going to be uh, Mind Frame which is the last track on the album I think they did a really good uh, job bookending this album um, and so I think sort of going through that, that whole phase of you know maybe we're front loading the album with some of these um, you know sort of power pop songs and then pushing more towards the, the dreamy part in the second half of the album. Um, and the last track, uh, it's just a really, it's a, it's a good outro. It's, um, even though there's no tempo changes or, you know, it, it doesn't really drift or sound different, it's, it's a good example of the mix of these two different sounds. Um, so like the last song, is a good culmination of, of the entire sound that, that Wild Onion is about. Yeah, and definitely the last song is the most like deer hunter sounding kind mm-hmm. of song, uh, very dream pop. The way it ends, it fades out 
just as it sounds like it's about to turn into something huge. Yeah. But then it just fades out, and that's like the end of the album. It almost it makes you want more. It makes you want to right, hear. Right. 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 Like what's next? Yeah. Which is why I said that this album is kind of like a transitional album. Yeah. Where like the next the next album. It's got they, you on the they, edge of your seat. If they yeah. keep, yeah, it's like a cliffhanger. Yeah. It's like a cliffhanger. Yeah. Uh, Paul, what do you think of the title of this album? Yeah, Wild Onion. You know, I'm not really into onions, but I do like this Wild Onion. I think it's a pretty good Wild Onion. All right, now stay with me here for a minute, but you know when you're on Facebook and you see like a stupid BuzzFeed quiz and you don't want to take it, but you take it anyway, and then at the end you sit there and you see the results and you're like, my hands were soup this whole time. That's the Wild Onion. Oh, you mean like when you're lying down and you have a boner and planes keep crashing into it? That's the wild onion? Yeah, it's kind of like when you finally smell what the rock is cooking. That's the wild onion. Or when you pretend to be a pile of trash and then you wake up in the presidential suite at the Hilton? That's the wild onion. Or a little midget dressed in red tells you that your favorite gum is coming back in style. Obviously, that's the wild onion. Or when you're hanging out at a cafe and people keep asking you about your log. That's the wild onion. Yeah. That's the wild onion. That's the wild onion. Pick up the jazz! So this is the first episode of Kick Out the Jams. We're going to give you a rundown of our rating system. We are rating our albums Collect, Consume, or Kaka. Collect is an album you want to add to your collection. Buy it in a physical version and have it as an album that you're going to listen to a few years down the line. Consume is something you just want to listen to a few times, um, you know, borrow your friend's copy or something. Don't download anything illegally. And Kaka? Is caca. Flush it down the toilet. So I'm gonna give Wild Onion by Twin Peaks a consume. Uh, it's a good album to listen to. It's good mood, mood music for about an hour or so, but I can't really see myself coming back to this album a few years from now. Uh, I, I, I think it'll hope lead to bigger and better things. Twin Peaks' trajectory is, is really good for a third album. Yeah, definitely. I agree with the trajectory for the third album, um, but I'm still going to give this a collect because I really, I mean, this is all I've been listening to for the past week. I see myself listening to this for at least another week, and that's enough for me to want to collect it. Um, a year from now, I'll probably want to listen to it again. I'm a huge sucker for the Dream Pop, uh, and then they did it really well, uh, this, and something that I would not expect from a band like this. So. I definitely, definitely look forward to the third album, uh, and I would, I would buy this. I think, I think it's worth it. Uh, you can hear Wild Onion on Pitchfork right now in the link below, uh, and the album is on sale at your local record store on Tuesday, August fifth. Be sure to leave in the comments what you think. Is this collect? Consume or, or caca. caca. Let us know. Thanks. This has been Pick Up the Jams. Episode 1. We reviewed Wild Onion by Twin Peaks. <laughs>